A warm welcome to All About Money on HKIBC. I'm Chloe Firm. FTX, probably the three most costless letters in the alphabet. That's the name of what was once the world's second largest cryptocurrency exchange. But then things started spiraling downwards very, very quickly. As founder and chief executive Sam Bankman Fried resigned and filed for bankruptcy. His previously estimated net worth of 23 billion US dollars dwindled to just one dollar in just one week, and cryptocurrencies plunged to another low. So, what exactly went wrong, and could it get even worse? Let's turn to Ken Lo, co founder and chief strategy officer at Hong Kong Digital Asset X Limited, and a professor at the Chinese University's Faculty of Engineering. So, welcome to the program, Ken. Thank you. Thank you for, for having me. So uh, it's, it's really great to be here to share some of the insights that we have seen uh, in the past two weeks. It's really like a soap drama. Yeah, I'm still digesting all the information as well. Actually, this company, it was founded in Hong Kong three years ago in 2019 before moving to the Bahamas last year. So I'm thinking at the beginning, let's provide some background for our viewers about this company. So how important was it for the industry uh, before its crash? And how did this company manage to gain very rapid growth over the past three years? Absolutely. Um, so I think this company, uh, as you mentioned rightfully, it started in Hong Kong and, uh, and then they moved to uh, uh, Bermuda uh, two years ago to, to grow into the size right, that we have seen today. So I think for FTX or, or his uh, uh, CEO, SPF, right, so we would like to explain a bit more about what really his empire uh, uh, was about, right? So first, right, FTX uh, is the second largest cryptocurrency exchange, right, before uh, the collapse, right, uh, two, uh, uh, two weeks ago, right? So in about millions of customers, right, and mm -hmm. also they have a lot of the mega deal uh, sponsorship with uh, sports teams in NBA, in Formula One, and a lot, a lot of the celebrities, right? Uh, for example, Tom Brady, Stephen Curry, they are also their ambassadors, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Promoting a lot of the cryptocurrencies um, on board at FTX, especially in, in US market as well. Right. And second, yeah. And another second thing is uh, they also provide a lot of the liquidity provider to all the, all, a lot of the crypto hash funds. So a lot of the cryptocurrency uh, hash funds, not just the retail, are the counterparty of FTX. So a lot of the people are trading at there as well. And more than that, uh, by not just being the exchange, FTX or SBF, they are also one of the major investors in the broader Web3 or the blockchain communities. They invest more than 100 projects, including one of the most famous public blockchain called Solana. So a lot of the NFT projects, right, they're also within this ecosystem. So I think I would say SBF has a huge influence in the whole crypto world. And that's why this news is a real shock to the whole industry. Right. And also, Ken, tell us about your personal perception about the key figure, Sam Bankman Fried or SBF. I mean, he's apparently a key figure in this industry and he was very high profile advocating for this industry to be recognized. And also he, he was calling for the regulations to be set up for this industry. Did you ever anticipate that this whole issue could ever happen? What was your uh, original impression on him before this crash? Sure, I think I think both uh, FTX and also Binance, right, uh, as, as, the, as the two largest cryptocurrency exchanges, right? So uh, um, they, they also advocate a lot of the collaboration with regulators, right? They push for a lot of the product innovation in the industry. And uh, and of course, right, uh, the way that they are, are, are going to do this, right, would be different to some of the licensed exchanges or custodians in Hong Kong. And we'll come back to that later. But anyhow, they are, uh, they are one of the most influential factors, right, to push for the whole Web3 innovation. So I think uh, we, we really could not uh, expect, right, uh, such collapse, right, in just two weeks' times, right? And uh, and that also ballooned a lot of the aftermath impact, both to customers, investors, and also a lot of the startups. Hmm. And now let's talk about the whole collapse. How did it even happen at the first place? I mean, what was the trigger point of this whole issue? Can you just run us through of the whole process as well? 
Sure. Um, so I think by understanding about why it uh, it happened, right, we, re we really need to look into one of the product that they issued, right? It's called FTT token. So what is FTT token? So FTT token is issued by FTX, right? It allows their owners to get discount on FTX trading fees, right? Increased commissions on referrals, right? So this is uh, a, a utility or some sort of like the payment token that can be used on FTX platform, right? With FTX platform growing into a huge popularity in the past three years, right? So, uh, so FTT token, right? Also, uh, uh, was very uh, uh, important, right? In terms of the token um, market mechanism as well. So the whole sector, right? Start from SBFs, another company that uh, he owned, right? It called Alameda Research, right? Mm. Which is also the liquidity provider to FTX, right? So on second of November, right? So uh, there's uh, there was a whistleblower, right? Mentioning that Alameda partnership has some trouble, right? Uh, they basically have a huge collateral on the FTT token that we mentioned. And we also note that, right, there's uh, some signals, right, that are around US dollar 530 million, right, moving from the FTT token to Binance exchange, right? And mm -hmm. on that night, Binance CEO sees that, right, mentioned in his Twitter that he's selling Right, all this 500, 300, uh, five, uh, 530 million FTT token. So I think that really shocked the market because that's, a, that's created a lot of huge speculation on FTT. Number one, what's happening with this, right? Why Binance, which is one of the early investors of FTX, right? They want to sell their FTT token. Two, it triggered around US dollar six billion withdrawal from FTX within 72 hours, right? which further damaged the FTX liquidity and also the FTT price. Hmm. So that is uh, the most important trigger point about why this happened. And then right, with the FTT price falling from $22 to $2 in just two days, right? That this uh, sparked a huge pressure, right, to Alameda Research, right, uh, as they are one of the major liquidity providers to FTX, right. So the whole thing is basically a simple bank run, right, snowball effect. A lot of the customers did not have enough information, right, to digest, mm -hmm. right, to know what's really happening. But they're just seeing the price of FTT token, which really represents some of the major assets of FTX. But the prices keep going down, right? People did not have enough faith, right, in the platform, and then balloon out for that. On November eight, and that was a very important milestone. Binance announced that they got into a non-binding letter of intent to buy FTX, subject to the due diligence of FTX, right? So both SBF and CZ probably mentioned that they are going to look into this matter, whether Binance, right, could buy out FTS. And in, in, in just one day, Binance officially saying this, after they look into the board, it's not sustainable, so they would walk away from the F FTX deal. So this official news further drove down, right, the whole FTT price, and a lot of uh, people start keeping on the withdrawal as well. The milestone is, uh, as we mentioned, Alameda Research, right, which was right. basically SPF's own app. The trading platform, right, is being worn down in November 10. So it's just three days, right, uh, since Binance are uh, mentioning whether they would go into uh, the uh, the uh, the White Knight deal, right. And then regulator in US, IE, SEC, CFTC, they also mentioned probably about that they would wrap up the, secu um, the scrutiny of the trading company and also the FTX, all right? And on the same day, the FTX assets were frozen by Bahama regulator, right? Mm -hmm. And November 11th, SBF resigned, right? As the CEO of FTX. And now, right, the current CEO of FTX, uh, which was very expertise, right, in, uh, in, in similar cases, right? And the last case uh, the new CEO has been doing was the Aaron cases, right? And one of the comments I want to highlight by the new, FT, uh, new FTX CEO, which he tweeted two days ago, where he mentioned that 
he never in his career right, seen such a complete failure of both the corporate controls, right? And also a complete absence of the trustworthy financial information, right? So clearly there are a lot of compromised financial system integrity, the faulty regulatory oversight, right? So his new insights, right, in FTAs really point out uh, some of the important things, right, that the whole crypto industry needs to be uh, learning from there. Right. I guess, uh, Stu, one of the core like issues that stunned many people was that the whole collapse happened in such a dramatically short time. I mean, from your point of view, how come there was no any room or signals to, you know, to, to signal this downfall prior to this collapse? Why there's no potential signals about this? Yeah, I, I think the whole uh, crypto industry uh, was uh, having a lot of faith, right, uh, in, in such uh, large cryptocurrency exchanges that, number one, uh, they have really, really good investor backing up, right, uh, uh, such as Tamasa, Sequoia Capital, uh, and also a lot of the pension funds, right, uh, in Europe and US as well. So as a retail or, 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 or institutional investors trading on FTX, right, they really place a lot of trust, right, in the exchange because they believed, right, all these investors have done their homework, right, to, to validate this platform is a solid one, right, and that's why they place their investment bet into this, uh, uh, this company. Number two, I think it's about uh, the regulations uh, oversight, as mentioned, right, mm. uh, whether uh, the cryptocurrency exchange, right, uh, uh, fall into seamless scrutiny like what we are doing with the banks or brokerage. For example, number one, do they have sufficient capital right, to repay uh, customer deposit? Number two, right, uh, what, how do they segregate the client money? Right? Even there's a speculation that SBF uh, has built a backdoor system that could avoid the internal compliance that can sweep the money from FTX to Elementor Research and that is really crazy right? if, you, if you're coming from a traditional finance uh, institutions. That would not be possible, right? And third, right, it's about uh, the integrity, the management team, where they have enough experience to handle the risk control, to handle the business. So I think all this, right, uh, basically in the past, we might turn into a blind eye. Right. Hold that thought, Kane. We'll take a short break for now. But coming up next, we'll have more discussions on the fallout of FTX with a perspective from Hong Kong. So don't go away. Welcome back to the second half of All About Money on HKIBC. I'm Chloe Fum. With us today is Ken Lo, co-founder and chief strategy officer at Hong Kong Digital Asset X Limited and a professor at the Chinese University's Faculty of Engineering. We're talking about the stunning downfall of FTX, the Bahamas-based cryptocurrency exchange, and its contagion effect. So thank you for speaking with us, Ken. So earlier we have talked about how FTX collapsed, and now I also want to delve dive more about the collapse impact on the virtual asset industry. Before that, I want to know your thoughts. So in a short summary, what do you think are the core reasons that have left to this downfall? I, I think from my perspective, uh, there are three major uh, issues, right, uh, leading to this uh, downfall. Number one is about transparency. Uh, uh, as a as a uh, as an investor or as a consumer trading at FTX, right? Uh, uh, due to its lack of regulatory oversight, right? To a certain extent, we really did not have a full picture about their whole financial info uh, uh, information, whether they are healthy enough, right? To repay customer deposit, I think that would be the first principle that we really need to uh, uh, be adhere to. If you are a licensed financial institution, but clearly. FTX right did not disclose right such information and that led to the transparency issue. And the sec then the second issue I would see is about the corporate governance as what rightfully pointed out by the new FTX CEO, right? Um, corporate governance was super important in order to make sure that every department uh, only played their uh, segregated duty. 
for example, right, if you are the CEO, right, you could not just move like 40 million or 50 million US dollar, right, from your exchange to your own trading arm, right? This would right. not be possible. So without a robust uh, risk management and control between different parties, right, in a corporate, right, this would also lead to a very, very big issue for that. And I totally foresee, right, a lot of the global cryptocurrency exchanges, right, they may also face similar issue, right? So a lot of them need to scramble, right, to to uh, increase, right, their awareness and also implementation of the uh, corporate governance. Third, it's about the risk management. Clearly, right, they use a very illiquid token, their own issued FTT token, as a collateral and also doing over leverage, right, in order to fill up some of the back core, right, of the loss, right, uh, mm -hmm. of their investment. So. That would make right the whole trading arm and its affiliated company FTX right stir into the trouble that we are seeing today. But if you're a licensed institution, right, you you cannot uh uh over leverage at the first place, right? Like what Elementor firm would be doing. That's mm -hmm. one. Two, there would be a lot more regulatory oversight, including your uh, auditor, including your regulator, looking into your risk management process. So in, in, in and so all in all, I think lack of transparency, lack of corporate go uh, governance, lack of risk management leading to this uh, meltdown of FTX. Right. Previously, I was also reading an article saying how uh, SBF he has a small circle of his you know trusted teammates as well. And if we look at the CEO of Alamanda Research, he's also said he uh, she is uh, SBF's you know romantic dating partner occasionally as well, although they are not commenting on this issue anymore. But another interesting issue about this whole drama would be the, you know, rivalry between CZ Jaw and also SBF as well. And some, there are some theories also suggesting that, you know, CZ Jaw had orchestrated the downfall of, you know, FTX to take down his rivalry. So, I mean, what is your comment on these kind of series and uh, what, what kind of impact would it also cause for this industry? Because apparently these two companies are also a leading company among this crypto industry as well. Yeah, I, I would say there, there were a lot of the speculations, right, especially on the Twitter. And, uh, and I think every minute we would see a whistleblower, right, uh, to, to, to leak uh, some new for information, right, to, to fill up this uh, sober drama of FTX and also the rivalry between uh, uh, SBF and also uh, CSAP as well. So from my perspective, I would say is uh, the, the meltdown of FTX really, really hurts a lot of the uh, consumers, which they also trade on the other cryptocurrency exchanges, right? And two, a lot of the investors right placing their trust in FTX, meaning they also put their votes right in supporting the whole crypto or wealthy evolution that really hurts right maybe mm -hmm. there are a lot of the investors right or, or the institutional uh private equity firms right they may not trust this story anymore right uh so that would also store right some of the product innovation right and it might also dry up a lot of the startup right that uh they, they were fighting for this web free dream which we really advocate about the uh the decentralization right and also having the whole uh profit redistribution to making the new web uh, 3.0 era right Let's now also talk about the key players being affected um, by this downfall as well. You know, notable big games include, for example, investors SoftBank, Temasek, and also the crypto lender companies such as BlockFi, Genesis, Gemini, uh, you know, and also if we uh, t think about the FTX, one million customers, how many more players do you think will be affected and how would it impact the whole broader cryptocurrency or even virtual asset industry as a whole? Would, would you think it will be kind of a death for cryptocurrency industry? I, I think that's a very good question, right? So, uh, um, for my own prediction, right, I would say that the meltdown of FTS was just the first trigger, right, to uh, uh, to 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 lead, right, to um, to a lot of more firms, right, uh, uh, either they collapse, right, either they have some bad news, right, either a lot of the people will be resigning from what they have been doing, right. So I think uh, that will be the whole reshuffle, 
right, of the whole competitive landscape, right, in the crypto uh, industry for that. So number one, right, uh, uh, this could also bring new opportunities, right, for, for some new players, right, uh, to, to pop up, right, and doing the right thing for the industry and help regain the trust. Second, uh, for investor perspective, right, a lot of people got burnt, right, so I would say that would uh, lead to probably at least a few months, right, to a year, right, for a lot of the investors uh, to relook into what are the investments they want to place in the whole Web3 or crypto world, right? Uh, and and that could lead to some of the dry up or a lot of startups that are keen to fundraising, right, in the next few months as well. Hmm. And third, right, uh, that would also lead to, uh, I would say, an interesting topic is whether institutional adoption of crypto will arise now, right? Mm -hmm. If we look at the past two years with the emergence of crypto becoming mainstream discussion, what we, right, as a as a, as a mass profit, we, we much very much focusing on the retail, but we should not ignore the powerhouse of the institutional players, in, especially in US, right? Such right. as Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, they all mentioning that they will go to support digital assets and see this as a truly alternative assets class. And that would really stir the whole transaction volume of a lot of the cryptocurrency exchanges, including FTS. So with the meltdown of FTS and with the further promotion of being regulated and compliant, right? I would even suspect there could be a lot of the big institutions, they might join for us, right? And build their own exchanges, right? Because that's what they're very good at. They have trust, right? They have the customer base and they could really do some good things, right, to build the industry in a more healthy and sustainable pace. Hmm. And also, Ken, speaking of Hong Kong, it, you know, this whole issue also came at a very interesting time when the Hong Kong government is trying to ramp up its efforts in growing its virtual asset industry. And you know, previously, the government said that it was considering to legalize retail trading. But then after this downfall, do you see there will be any you know, impact on you know, hindering retail trading possibilities in Hong Kong? What's your view on that? And also, how has Hong Kong's uh, crypto players being affected by this downfall as well? I think right now there's no better and the right timing for Hong Kong government really to relook into how to allow the retail customers for trading cryptocurrencies. And I think more important is about how to insert right the investor protection to making sure that uh, no uh, uh, Hong Kong retail customers will be impacted right, by another FTS meltdown like, like this one. So I think this is truly important right, for Hong Kong government to step up, right, to relook into their current virtual assets trading regime. Right? Number one, whether retail customers could really trade uh, uh, cryptocurrencies right, at license exchange. Two, how to use this momentum right, to propel the product innovation in the blockchain or wealthy world right now, right? So I, a lot of the people also mentioned that Hong Kong has been lagging behind the past three years, right? Coupled with the COVID situations. Um, but I think, right, um, the whole paradigm can shift very quickly. Think about how FTS evolves to now. It just took three years, right? So I think if Hong Kong government has set up the right uh, roadmap, Right for the market participants, right to join force to build the virtual assets ecosystem, including trading platforms, banks, brokers, assets management. All these licensed uh, institutions, right, they could enable investors to uh, trade cryptocurrency in a regulated and also safety manner. I say, why not? Right, it could really help Hong Kong people to know more about this um, alternative assets class and also attract a lot, a lot of the new funding and startup to incubate in Hong Kong. Thank you very much for your thoughts, Ken. That's Ken Lo, co-founder and chief strategy officer at Hong Kong Digital Asset X Limited. And thank you for watching All About Money. We'll be back next Sunday night on HKIBC. Until the next time, see you then.